morning. We, um, we're going to shell corn today. So we got the dryer fired up. I'm just getting that started and watching it, making sure everything's working and running and going to do what it's supposed to do. And uh, then we got two loads to haul in. I got one on my truck. Phil's got one on his. His, mine, whatever. They're just the trucks, the trucks that we drive. And uh, when we get back, we're going to go try and shell corn. Although the driveways are pretty sloppy right now. Well, I hope the fields are a little bit better. I, I didn't even look, but I think we had about a quarter of an inch of rain yesterday. So but we're super dry. It should soak in pretty well. All right. Well, when we start that dryer up, I always like to sit here and watch it. At least fill itself once and just make sure the augers and everything's going to run all right. So we just did that. We were good. We're going to jump in the truck, get this load hauled in, and then go shell corn. Well, the road's almost all dried off here. Time to go to work. Oh, this is what everybody wants to see. Always a lot of water top of the tarp when it rains. Better on the top of the tarp than in the cart though. We've got this field up here on the corner. Uh, Dad's starting there. Um, there's 42 acres in this one. This is our last field in Michigan. The last the other one we've got up here to do is in Ohio and then all the stuff in Berkey is in Ohio. So we're gonna let him get some ends opened up and then we'll jump down there. The trucks, I don't, yeah, they're parked down the road farther. That's the best place to park trucks on this one. So everything's got to get carted to there. Um, not super convenient, but it will be fine. I, I've said this before and been wrong, but I don't expect this corn to be super fantastic. Um, this, this field, the hybrid that's there is the one that's been by far the most disappointing this year. And, uh, uh, when I side dressed it, I thought this was our worst corn. I thought the stand was thin on the ridges and it just didn't look great. Now, when our guy with the haggy sprayed this field, he said he thought it was some of our best looking corn and it was tall and it looked really good. We'll see who's right here. Quick check for, yep, yeah, no, we're good here. No electric lines on this field. At least not in the back here. There's some up front? Yeah, there's some up front. <laughs> anyway. Uh, getting started here. We may even get a little bit of mud sticking to the tires and the tracks. Doesn't look like a lot, but it may get just a touch tacky here this morning. That'll dry out over the course of the day and we'll be fine. Like Dad said, it's not even harvest if we don't mud something out. So I don't know if this counts as mudding it out, but we're going. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I guess it's working. I was coming up here waiting to figure out what dad was gonna do and he backed up and just turned around and came right at me. I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? He didn't let me turn around, so we're dumping in the wrong side of the cart. If you can't, can't figure it, yeah, that's, he can't see the cart at all, which is why he's dumping right on the edge of it. Cause he doesn't wanna shoot it over, but he can't see it cause the, that side is lower than that side and you can't see from the combine cab. We're just gonna go ahead and take a shortcut to the trucks. Well, Dad's opening the field up here. Uh, um, I got a comment the other day about how many paved roads that we have. And, well, perhaps I just don't show the roads very much, but we do farm a fair bit on dirt roads. Now our farm is on a paved road and the road up there where that truck was is a paved road and a lot of our fields are on that one. Um, but we do have dirt roads as well. And they're sloppy and dirty when it's wet but it is what it is and they're very very seldomly traveled which is why they're dirt now ohio this is michigan in ohio they don't have dirt roads they're all paved at least around here they're all paved so um yeah it's, it's what it is the dirt roads are all in michigan well it's not terribly muddy out here but we are making an imprint and there's just a little sticking to the tires and tracks. Like I said, that'll get better. So, uh, in today's tractor snacks, we have cinnamon teddy grams because I have young children and it's not weird, so don't worry about it. So you can kind of see here how thin that corn is. Um, yeah, that's that's what I noticed when I was side dressing. Uh, Dad just came on the radio and asked if this was a stale seed bedded field. It was. This is, was wheat last year. We planted uh, that oats and radish cover crop after we spread chicken litter on here. And um, yeah, it's just, 
it, it didn't work as good here. Whether it was a touch wet when we planted or it's just the genetics. We had poor seed quality. I don't know. Um, but uh, we're not real happy with how this one turned out. Now, he did say it's in the high 170s. It'll get a little better from there. It's decent corn, but it's it's not as, as good as what most of our other stuff has been. So pretty much what I expected when we pulled in here. We're moving along here. Uh, check it out, we even got some sunshine today. So that's helping dry things out and uh, it's, it's going well. Um, I don't know, we've maybe got 10 or 15 acres left here. It's uh, 12.30. We should get this done and on to the next field here this afternoon. We're gonna, we're gonna keep moving. Oh, we got a second. Caught up to the combine. So I'm just gonna get out and take a look at the corn, look at the ground. See what we're doing. Watch the combine go by. Loss levels look pretty good. There are a couple of kernels, but that's to be expected and not bad. Sorry, that passive equipment filming went to Instagram, not YouTube. Anyway, you can see how thin this corn is. The fact that I can walk through it like it's a corn maze without touching a plant is not a good thing. That is not a good stand. We should not have a two and a half foot gap between plants here. Um, yeah, it's, it's way too late to diagnose what happened and why. Now that's something you have to do in the spring as it's coming up. I knew this stuff was thin. I knew it was going to be a problem. I still don't think it's bad corn because look at what happens here. Let me, hold on, look at that here. That's impressive. See, this plant didn't have any competition next to it, so this ear flexed and it got really long. And I mean, there's kernels growing right off the end of it. That's good. It's not enough to make up for um, not having these plants here. You can see the ones over here on this side, they flexed a little bit too. But look at this one. This one was interesting. You see that? We've got some ear mold going on there. I'm not sure which ear mold exactly. I'll send a picture to Agronomist Wade, see what he says. But um, there's been some issues with vomitoxin in some of the corn this year that I've heard about, specifically more to the south of us than here. But come on, focus. There we go. But um, um, we've, we've got some of that mold and stuff in some of the kernels, and, the, and it can cause what we what is known as vomitoxin. And if the... Um, amount of that in the corn gets too high then the elevators start uh, uh, docking us they don't pay as much they, they deduct how much they pay us per bushel and if it gets too high they'll actually reject the load and you won't be able to sell that load of corn so uh, fortunately on everything we've done so far has been really good we haven't had any issues that is a little concerning um, but it is heavily weather dependent and uh, has a big genetic component to it in whether or not um, you get vomitoxin. Well, if the combine's coming back, we can go film it for you. Now we better get back into the grain cart. We gotta go. So anyway, about that vomitoxin, um, I've heard uh, uh, from the people at the elevator, they tested some of ours, not yesterday, but the last day that we were hauling some last week, maybe Wednesday. Uh, Phil said he talked to them, and the highest load that we had was 0.9 parts per million, which is really low. I think you're allowed up to three, at least, maybe five. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but he said that uh, they were seeing a lot that were between 9 and 12 parts per million and anything over 12 was a reject, like they were not dumping it. Uh, I have heard that one of the ethanol plants south of here an hour, hour and a half has been getting a bunch of vomit toxin in their corn and um, as high as 50, which is unheard of, off the charts unheard of. And yeah, that would be uh, devastating. So for the most part, I think our corn is good. I haven't, at least we haven't seen or heard of any issues with what we have delivered so far. You can kind of watch the kernels and the grain quality to see what it looks like. Most of it has looked good. There's a variety or two, this one included, that um, you can see some of those molds. And that doesn't guarantee that the vomit toxin is there. It just is an indicator that it might be. Um, so it's something we're watching, but 
On the other hand of that, if all of our corn is really good quality, putting it in the bins and keeping it until later in the winter or summer when uh, everybody else is out of really good quality corn may come in extremely beneficial. There may be a big premium or uh, a good basis for good quality uh, corn. So anyway, that's what we're, we're hoping for at least. So uh, anyway, Dad's down to the last two rounds over there. We're gonna get the cart emptied into this empty truck that we've got here right now, go back and catch the rest, and then we'll be ready to move. I should also mention that the reason that that is a big deal and the vom and stuff in the corn is um, it can make pigs sick. So the vast majority of our corn is not going into um, people food, right? Very, very little, if any of it, is actually getting consumed by humans. The majority of it is either going to ethanol production or livestock feed. Uh, and that could be through an export market, it could be domestically. Um, I've, I think I have heard that for the most part, uh, chickens and cattle uh, can process the VOM okay at higher concentrations, relatively higher concentrations, 50 still probably pushing it, and be okay. It's pigs that are super sensitive to it. Uh, I've got a, um, a customer of mine towards our Berkey farm that raises hogs, and uh, they're super sensitive to VOM because they feed a lot of their corn. And um, that's, that's been a selling point for, for the Golden Harvest stuff, specifically with our agar sherbet teratrate that keeps the bugs out of the ears. If you can keep the bugs out of the ears, you can keep the molds out more so because it's not opening up that wound as a pathogen or a, uh, a path for the pathogen, the disease, to get started and to start molding. So um, we have a little bit less occurrence of VOM in our corn where we have the Vipterra trait. I'm not saying we eliminate it, I'm saying it's better. Anyway, that's the, the point that I was trying to make there is that it's not good for pigs. It is um, something that we just we need to watch the levels and the concentrations of. Dad's gotten pretty comfortable in the combine. Running five and a half to six mile an hour here. This tractor's got just a little bit of a, a range shift in that 5.6, 5.7 mile an hour speed and it, you can just feel it. Not sure which range it's supposed to be in. I don't know. I've talked to the dealer about it. There's another one at like nine and a half to ten, and it just it doesn't feel right, but it seems to be okay. So anyway, last pass. We're finishing up this field here. Should all fit on the truck that we've got over there, so that is good, kind of. I don't think this was great corn, but it was not terrible. The 180s, and we will take it uh, onto the last field here at Walter. Down to one, 80 acres to go. Let's do it. Did we end up okay out here? 187. 187. All right, I'll take that. Getting all the trucks and equipment moved back to the farm. We're fueling the combine up. Getting ready to go to that last field. Phil's getting trucks emptied. I don't know where we're at with wet corn. We did not start with the bin empty, so we might have quite a bit. I think everybody's gonna take a quick break, grab some lunch. It's two o'clock, so we're, you know, we got time, but we got 80 acres, and I'm, my goal is to finish it tomorrow, so we should be fine. We can get half or more of that done today, and I'll be thrilled. And uh, we might even be able to move to Berkey tomorrow after we're done. That would be even better. Combine's fueled up, grain cart doesn't need fuel. Dryer's still running, we're still at three lights on our bin, which means we haven't gained any, but we haven't lost any. And we're gonna head to the next field. Last one, let's go, let's go. Moving stuff over to the last field here. Um, just looking at the ground, I, I think we'll be okay here, parking trucks in the field and trying to get out that driveway. We need to get some corn out of the way so we got more room to turn around and park them where we want, but I think this one will work for right now turn your turn signals off there dude um <clears throat> anyway we'll try it all right now this field this field was the very very first planted corn that pass right there very very first day we planted corn april 22nd i looked it up um first field planted last one harvested it's funny how that works it is also the only field that we did a 
split planter uh, trial out here. So I'll show you that better as we get it opened up. But essentially I planted two different hybrids out here, half on each side of the planter and you can, you can tell. Um, but easier from the ends than across the sides. So uh, we'll see how much of a difference there is between them. That's why you do these to, to kind of compare stuff. Uh, both hybrids we have been in already, both have been excellent corn, one of them better than the other. So um, we'll see on that. And we're also just around the corner from the farm, which is right over there. And my seed warehouse kind of right next to it. I also got a call from a truck driver about 45 minutes ago telling me he was going to be at my place in an hour and a half, which would be 45 minutes from now with a delivery. I don't know where he said he was from or what he said he was bringing. I'm not expecting anything, but there's a truck showing up. So I've got my pickup over here so we can go and get it unloaded when he shows up. I do expect that this is going to be good corn. Um, based on everything we've done and these hybrids and planting date and everything else, I'll be pretty surprised if this isn't 220 bushel average out here. Maybe better than that, but we'll see. Oh, also, when we get way over on the other side where I don't have a split planter and it's a single hybrid across there, that's where I'm going to do one of my little compaction comparisons like I did last year. You guys remember that where I harvested each row separate on the planter or uh, uh, yeah, from the planter. So rows one and 16, two and 15 and worked our way to the center so that we could see that pinch row compaction on the row that was between the duels. Uh, we're going to do that again. We're going to do it over there uh, and see if the tracks on the 8RX that we used for planting made the difference that I think they made. Time to prove it. But that will probably be in tomorrow's video. So we're getting a hole broke through the middle. Right, the two rows right in the front there are of the different hybrids. That's the split in the planter. And uh, can, can you see the difference in them? Like how this side is brighter and standing taller and this side is duller and smashed down more. But when you look at the hybrids, the one on this side, so these eight rows that are gone and the next eight rows are the same. These eight rows and the next eight are the same. Um, that hybrid is standing better, it's taller. This one right here isn't too bad, but in a lot of spots, the tops are broken down or it's just a little bit shorter. It's interesting how you can see the difference in the stubble. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what the yield does on them. And uh, we'll get, yeah. We're just trying to still get room to park trucks and get everything opened up right. I don't know if he's gonna turn around and come here, dump unloading on the way to the truck. To the road or if we got to go around the other side over by the trees over there the roads still kind of curve around the trees so we're, we're still getting out in the middle here so i sent a picture of that ear of corn that was moldy from the last field to my agronomist wade um, but you guys see how the corn head is starting to look black there and the side shields on the combine this is the first i've noticed it um, wade says that that mold was uh, fusarium most likely which uh, i believe is the same disease or the same fungus that infects our wheat and caused the combine to turn super black when we were doing wheat, remember? And we get that fusarium head scab. Um, so I think that that last field of corn probably had it in it fairly bad and that's what's uh, caused the ear mold and is what's, there was probably some stalk rot in there as well. And it's showing up on the combine as black spores and stuff um yeah anyway something to take note of it's yeah we did spray a fungicide on that field so i'm a little surprised to see it on the combine like that i would think that would have held it off some but they're not 100 percent effective so i guess it's not that surprising i bet that's my truck half an hour after he said he would be there but I've been watching and watching and watching and there comes one after I get this round we'll go get him unloaded I have no idea what I have on that truck I suppose it's possible they shipped me seed usually they call me and tell me it's coming I I don't know it's my glitter oh joy pearl bright this is the shiny powder that we put on seed goes through my dry applicator. You can probably still see a little bit down in there. It just makes beans shiny. That's all it does. So I got lots of it this year because I'm going to put it on most, if not all, of my beans. 
for the first day of November, it got real nice again. Short sleeves, t-shirt weather. It's supposed to be in the 70s the next couple of days, or 70, I guess, but still, really nice. Well, we've made it to behind the buildings. Uh, see that grass right there? There's a fence post in there. I'm not driving through there. I'm not ruining a track on a fence post. It's the lot. It's the, in this case, house lot. It's his corner post, and he wants it there, so we leave it there. It's probably falling down. All right, Dad, shut the auger off. He's going to cab corn it. I can tell. Watch him stop. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, we had to open up the end rows in the back, got past the woods here. Yep, that was as far as he could go. We're chasing the deer out. It was a doe. And there's two more of them. They're everywhere, I tell you. We're taking their cover, though. Those are just little ones. Dad can, he doesn't make it too far in these rows. This, is, this has got to be pretty good corn because he's empty at the other end and by the time he gets to the, there and turns around to here, he's full. And we're not quite half mile long rows. So, yeah, it's good corn. I know that. Let's see if we can figure out about where we're at here. What are these rounds yielding in here? Feels like you're getting a lot of corn. Some well, of these rows are longer in here too. Yeah, but they're still not half mile rows. They're shorter than they were up on the irrigated field, and we're seeing similar bushels here. Well, it, it jumps around, but it runs in the 250 to 270 to 280 sometimes. Well, that's good. Are you seeing much difference in the two varieties? No, not a lot. You know, you're gonna have to go in and isolate them out. Right. Yeah. The computer will keep all that stuff separate. It'll so right now it says 279, 283, then it jumps down but pops back up with the 270. This is really good corn. That's awesome. The slow ground in here, it's like a you know curve down. It's, it jumps right up. Good. Well, that's awesome. going to be another one of those sunsets tonight. It's just beautiful. Nice clear night. We, yeah, I cleared off today. We had a really nice beautiful day. Should be in a couple more on their way. Uh, we've gotten a lot done here and we're not done but uh, yeah we're, we're moving right along with this field and should easily be able to finish it tomorrow. All we have to do is get over to those trees over there and get the cord out of your way so you can see. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe 35 acres left here or something? I could look it up and see, but I don't feel like it right now. So, uh, I assume we're not going to work super late. It's almost 7 now. I would say within an hour we'll be quitting, which is fine. Because, um, yeah, because we'll be able to finish tomorrow easy. And Brock's coming tomorrow, so I get to get back in a combine, which will be good. We've made it up to these other trees here. Uh, let's see. Here's a map. It looks like that. We started down here in this corner. There's some trees here. There's a woods back here. We worked across. This is that house lot. And now we're up to this woods back here. There's another house lot here. So um, back over in this area is where I want to do my compaction study that I was telling you about. Um, but I would, I would guess we aren't going to get a whole lot farther here tonight. But uh, anyway, Dad's going to have to do some end rows is what I'm trying to tell you. And so we're going to sit here. He's going to get unloaded. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go jump in and ride around with them on these ends, just to uh, see how things are going. It's tall back here. Yeah, I think that's the 111 day. Same stuff we had up on newcomers. That was really good. Was good here too. Tree down. No good. Gotta go.
Got done. He's full. Needs to unload. You gonna go on to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there. Let's. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We in the? Are we in the area? The box. We're in the box. Yeah. Hit the button. What the? Machine sink do its thing. It's a little bit slow to get the auger over the grain cart. Like it's almost, almost, almost. Come on, keep going, keep going. Okay. Dad talked to Phil and I guess our wet bin is full and uh, we can fill one more truck, which, well, we've got 43,000 pounds on the cart here. It won't fill a truck, but we can't do another round and get it all on. So I think this is gonna be it quit here but we've made it into the long rows that go all the way out to the road here between the um, between the houses so yeah we're we're good we can we can finish this tomorrow pretty easy let's see where we're at acres wise go to the totals shared totals 49 so we did almost 50 acres here we got just under 35 to go 34 to go yeah easy to do that tomorrow and we did uh, 42 in the first field here today, so uh, 92 almost, over 90 acres today. That might be our biggest day of corn that we have done this year. So yeah, we had a great day. A good day, definitely a good day. We got a lot done, so take the truck back. We'll see where we're at. We'll let the dryer run for a while tonight, hopefully. Uh, we'll have to see how much is in our uh, bin. Cause Dryer's been running all day today. It's got to be getting that bin that we pulled down yesterday fairly full. It shouldn't be full yet. We should have plenty of room to store everything or at least get it out of the field. Um, but our wet bin is full now, so yeah, we got to get it drawn down. I need to do some math, figure out what we've got left. If we got 35 acres to go at 240, how many bushels is that? Well, it's not clear full. The red light's not on. It's got to be fairly full. Well, it's going to be close. We were right on that edge of having too many bushels to fit in the bins and having to haul more. So um, Phil's going to get the truck empty tonight, refill them with dry corn. We'll plan on doing kind of the same thing we did today where we each take a load in in the morning of uh, dry corn just to give us a little bit more space. Um, the, the thing is we're going to have our wet bin full. And this corn's not as dry as I thought it might be. Um, I had hoped that this field, there's two varieties out there, right? Both of which we've been in already. One of them was 18%, the other was 17 and a half to 18 and a half. Well, this stuff here that was planted earlier is coming out of the field at 19 and a half to 20, 20 and a half. So it's a little bit wetter, um, which means we can't let it set wet as long as we could if it was 17. I thought it would be drier, it's not. Uh, so we can't just let it set in the wet bin while we go to Berkey and shell corn. So we're gonna have to dry it which means we have to have room to dry it. And um, so we're gonna, we're gonna work on that here as, as we go, but um, we're gonna pull some more dry corn out. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, it's supposed to be super foggy in the morning, so we'll have to deal with that with trucking and everything as well. Um, box coming, and we're gonna finish selling that corn. Hopefully we'll get some stuff moved to Berkey tomorrow afternoon, but mm, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. We'll see. Thanks for watching this one. We'll be back tomorrow. Hit that like and subscribe button. Questions, comments, leave them down below. See you guys.